Welcome to Beacon Hall and what I know will be a memorable tour around Bob Cup's masterpiece. My name is Phil Hardy and I've had the distinct pleasure of representing this club and course as director of golf for 30 years and now as Beacon Hall's membership director. The following video will give you some insight into the magic of Beacon Hall and the diversity of two distinctly different nine-hole experiences as you play a front nine reminiscent of the Carolinas and then are transported on the back nine to the wonderful Lynx courses of the UK. So join me for what we hope will be an experience that will inspire all of your golfing senses. Like any great book that needs to capture the attention of the reader, Beacon Hall's first hole is a classic. The elevated tee allows the golfer to see exactly what is in front of them, starting with a reasonable carryover fescue. While driver is the normal club of choice, a shorter tee shot can catch a downslope just over the fescue. The pin position will determine the optimum side of the fairway to be on. A back left pin creates an advantage from the right of the fairway and vice versa. The green is perched with a false front rejecting shots that are short. Bluegrass depressions guard both sides of the green, making the second shot very critical. Being a little defensive and avoiding short-siding yourself will often lead to an easy two-putt or pitch shot. A short par four often affords options as Beacon Hall's second hole showcases. A long hitter should target the fairway bunkers on the right as a successful tee shot will not only allow for a short wedge into the green, but a better angle to all left pins. The shorter or safer play is to aim left of the fairway. The consequence of the left route is the angle to the green, especially the left pins. Second shots to the left face deep bunkers and being overly defensive to the right will be penalized by a downslope. The green is bisected by a rise that makes two putting difficult if the second shot is short or long of the pin. The first of Beacon Hall's par threes is a test of accuracy and distance control, especially from its elevated tees. If you are off a little on your distance, a deep bunker awaits the short ball. Long in the back bunker will grab you leaving a downhill bunker shot. Not anyone's favorite. Wide shot should favor the left as a steep slope and fescue await the errant shot to the right. The steeply sloped left side of the green will repel anything short left and will send it to the fairway below. The right pin is a true test of shot making. As Bob Cup would say, I hope you're warmed up by number four because the course steps it up a notch. Beganall's number one handicap hole is a three shot par five with a capital S on strategy. The key to the drive is not just accuracy, but getting out far enough to be in a position to carry two bunkers that guard entry to the third shot. A good drive and a fairway metal or long iron puts the golfer in position for a short iron to the green. Do the math on your second shot to get your favorite distance for your third shot. Too long on your second, and you may not like a half wedge from a downhill tight line. The green is again wide but very narrow, making distance control critical. Short on your third and three deep pot bunkers await. Long and you have a downhill lie out of bluegrass. All in all, number four has earned its reputation as Beacon Hall's number one handicap hole. The par four fifth is a layup hole for long hitters. The fairway ends at about 240 yards where the perfect landing area is notched between a slope on the right and a fairway bunker on the left. Accomplishing the first test allows the player a perfect view of the green 50 feet below and 150 to 160 yard shot. Short off the tee will leave a much longer blind shot that inevitably plays havoc on the mind. The green is flanked by a large fescue laden hill on the right that unfortunately swallows balls rather than caroms them and on the left by a large bunker, the green slopes from back to front. Hole number
number six represents the classic drivable par four with a risk reward feature. A line to the green off the tee requires a forced carry over marsh. Carry distances range from 270 yards from the championship markers to 175 yards from the yellow markers, giving all golfers a realistic opportunity to go for the green. For the vast majority of mortals, the right or safer route off the tee will leave anywhere from 100 to 150 yards to the green. The green opens from front left to back right in line with the longer tees. Assessing the pin placement before teeing off is wise given the many options that this short par four has to offer. The second of Beacon Hall's par fives begins with the middle six as Bob Cup refers to holes seven to 12. This is a chance to pick up a few strokes with three par fives. The tee shot is critical on this 90 degree dog leg to the right with signal bunkers running up the left side off the tee. Left center is normally the line to get a clear shot at the fairway turn. Short hitters should aim just right of the first bunker. A missed tee shot to the right while in the fairway may have no shot other than a chip to the dog leg. Once in position off the tee, this is another three shot par five or doing the math and leaving yourself a comfortable distance for your third shot is wise. The green is long and narrow and is guarded by a left front bunker that penalizes either an aggressive second shot or a poor third. Shots to the left of the green will find a deep grassy depression leaving a nasty lob out of lush bluegrass. The green has two tiers, making distance control very important. While number eight is Beacon Hall's shortest par three, water has always played a big role in the psyche of a golfer, making the land to the right seem more inviting. The harsh reality is such that it may be less penalizing to be in the hazard than on the hillside or in one of Cup's signature bent grass bunkers. The short bunker creates the illusion that the green is closer. The green is divided from front to back by a ridge that will make a two-putt demanding if you are in the wrong section of the green. Lots of demand for accuracy and distance control at the par 4 ninth. The tee shot must carry a ball 200 yards over fairway bunkers cut into the hillside. A further fairway bunker guards the left side, as it is preferred to access most pins. The second shot, while relatively short, is possibly the most demanding on the front nine with deep greenside bunkers protecting shots that come up short. As the pin moves further right, the shot becomes longer without the golfer being fully aware. The front bunkers are a haven for misjudged shots. Like any great course, merely hitting the green may not be enough, as number nine's green has several ridges running through it, making each pin placement unique and demanding. It's difficult to imagine a better introduction to the back nine and the aforementioned transition to the links of Scotland and Ireland than Beacon Hall's par five tenth hole. It offers an incredible blend of vistas and wonderful course strategy. The aiming point for the tee shot at number 10 is the long fairway bunker with longer hitters able to challenge the line of fairway bunkers down the right. Regardless, the tee shot in the right side of the fairway offers a much better view of the second shot landing area than the left side. The successful second shot should not only find the fairway in front of the pond that guards the green, it also needs to find the comfortable yardage for the third shot. The green slopes left to right and watch out for back right pins as the ball can drift off the green and even into the pond with any momentum. One more thing, when you arrive at the 11th tee, look backwards on number 10. It's hard to believe, but number 11 is the 18th handicap hole at Beacon Hall. The view from the tee is anything but comforting. The bailout is a fairway transition area to the right that allows players to avoid being out of play to the left. The green is two-tiered, forcing players to be precise in distance as well as accuracy. Short off the tee will find the deepest bunker on the course, and long will find another of Bob Cup's bent grass bunkers. Regarded as the best chance for a birdie, number 12 needs to be given respect as there are plenty of perils for the careless. The perfect tee shot challenges the fairway bunker on the left and rests just on the crest of the slope, leaving a perfect view of the green. The next fairway bunker is a signal that the golfer needs to challenge it as the green runs from front left to back right. The back right pin is much more accessible from the left side of the fairway. Making a mistake on your second shot will potentially leave a nasty third regardless of the length. The green is well protected by bunkers to the right and a transition area back left. 
watch out for the speed putting toward the front of the green. Aspirations for a birdie can often lead to disappointment and a bigger score than anticipated. Beacon Hall's final six holes are as diverse and demanding as you will find anywhere, and there is no better entree than the par 4 13th. This historic hole was the site for many of the Toronto and North York horse shows. The fairway bunkers on the left again signal that the optimum second shot vantage point is from the left. Long hitters can drive over the first jump to the right side of the fairway, but a slight push will end up in an area of bluegrass moguls. The green runs significantly from front left to back right, with the signature pin being the back right position. The pond to the right of the green is the primary hazard to avoid, but if you are too cautious, two bunkers await the cowardly, including a deep pot back left. Four is always a good score at the 13th. The expanse of the hole and the width of the green creates a comfortable feeling, but don't be fooled. The par 3 14th is a tough par with fescue to the right and a valley of sin like drop off in the left front section of the green. While rare, a shot over the green will find deep grassy depressions that will make the chip shot to the green sloping away from you very demanding. The green slopes significantly from back to front. The dogleg left par 5 15th is incredibly distinctive with a variety of challenges facing both the longer hitter and the shorter hitter. A deep waste bunker separates routes for the golfer to consider. The left route was designed exclusively for players capable of reaching the green in two. The carry distance to the left fairway is 270 yards from the black tee. As you would expect, the left is well guarded with multiple bunkers and fescue. Playing right of the bunker establishes the 15th as a true three-shot par five. Once accomplished, the second shots require precision and thought as perils await both routes. The heroic route will ask the golfer to hit a long iron or fairway wood over or around a solo white pine to a green guarded by fescue on the left and deep bunkering on the right. The green is very difficult with a false front rejecting all shots that come up short and an upper tier to the back left. Consistently regarded as one of the best 18 holes in Canada, Biganall's par 3 16th is the big ticket. At 223 yards, this is a very demanding par 3 for even the elite player. Distance control is again imperative as short and long have their own inherent problems. With a fescue-laden hillside and gaping bunkers short, the tee shot is sometimes better served to the left, to a fairway that offers unobstructed entry to the green. Too long and two bunkers await to make back pins virtually impossible to get close to. Par is definitely a good score here. While the 17th is the best chance for a birdie in the final six holes, don't be fooled by its shortish length. The tee shot must be threaded between a prominent hill with trees and fescue on the left and a deep valley of fescue on the right. Depending on the pin position, the conservative play off the tee may be wise but the longer the second shot, the greater the potential for failure. The green runs from front right to back left, with the back left pin being longer than it looks. The second shot must be precise with a water hazard penalizing shots short left and a deep bunker gathering most shots long. Don't get too cocky about number 17. Hole number 18 is the culmination of Beacon Hall's two experiences. The tee shot showcases the finish to the links of the back nine and the second shot reminds us of the Carolinas and the front nine. As has been the case throughout the course, Bob Cup offers a couple of choices off the tee. For the medium hitter, a plateau awaits to offer the golfer 175 yards to an elevated green. For the long hitter, there is a chance to carry the dogleg. The gamble involves carrying tall white pines at the corner. The second shot is uphill to a green with tiers back left and right. While the middle of the green is a good play, Two putts are very difficult if the pin is in either of the back positions. Short left coming into the green will find one of three bunkers and right will find a single bunker that seems to attract balls like a magnet. 